You've been through quite an amazing journey from a health perspective in the, in the, over the 10 years. I think you've beaten leukemia three times. Uh, and after that third time, which, which that alone is its own impressive story, but after that third time, I think you went into a, a new challenge. And can you tell a little bit about your, your story and your journey? So that's right. That last time ended up being leukemia coming back in the form of a brain tumor. And so that, that was pretty significant. Um, I was told what it would take to recover from that. And about six months into it, I found myself in a place I just really didn't expect to find myself. And it was this place I was, I was finding myself dealing with insomnia, anxiety, depression. Like, what is going on? No one, no one told me about this. Um, you know, they told me about the physical challenges I'd been, been through, would, would be dealing with, but not this mental health issue that I'd be dealing with. And I was really, really struggling. Like, how would I ever do my job? What would that even look like? What, what would people think if they saw me struggling? <laughs> and what would I say to them? That was a hard place to be in. And I wrote you a note. And it was a long note about, Greg, here's where I'm at. Here's what I'm dealing with right now. And I remember there was actually a lot of fear and apprehension about writing that note to you and some of the other leaders about what was going on, thinking, what will they think? You know, will, will, will I be able to do my job? And uh, so that was what was going on in my head. And, you know, I've never asked you this, but you received that note. What, what was it like when you got that, knowing what I was going through? Well, you know, first of all, it was, uh, it, it, it was heart-wrenching to hear you going through a, another challenge. Um, I think, as you know, for the past few years, we've been talking about mental health quite a bit as an organization. In that process, I've learned a lot about it and how to help support people. Um, but the first thing that goes through your head is how do we support you, in this case, as an individual, just from a humanistic perspective, because you want to, because we, we care about you, we love you and, and, and your friend. And then you quickly also go to what should we do from an organization standpoint and how do you, how do you help you in that journey and also you know, pragmatically kind of run an organization and a business. We had our initial conversation and, and we talked about like, let's go, go, go get healthy, go get the help you need. Um, but there was a, a, a much broader layer of support. You started to open up to other individuals at Tier 1 uh, that you had relationships with. Can you talk about kind of how other, other uh, Tier 1 associates supported you and what, how people can support you when, when someone's going through something like that? You know, that's, that was really neat. As, as I, and I felt like I could lean in and, and trust a few people that, and I'd worked with them for a while. Certainly they weren't strangers. Um, and as I did that, it was amazing the stories that actually came out. You know, a, a person might said, you know what, my mom was dealing with the same thing. This is what she did. You know, I had a brother. I had another, you know, all these stories just coming out where I felt like I'm not the only one in the world dealing with this, okay? This is happening in colleagues across our workplace environment. It's, it's happening in my network. And so those stories, it was amazing how um, therapeutic that could be to actually help me step through. I'm not alone. Yeah, I, I think that's a big part of it is normalizing the discussion. We all know, you know, physical issues. We've talked about this before. You've obviously had a history of beating cancer and um, people are a lot more comfortable talking about cancer. You hear it right away in conversation of, you know, I had a, a loved one. In the mental health space, I think, you know, we've, we've progressed as an organization how we talk about it, but it's still kind of a hidden thing. And still, I, as I was sharing with you earlier, I think you know, sometimes the, you know, you can have a mental health conversation and you, you'll be 30 minutes into the conversation before someone actually offers up, I actually have dealt with this directly. Uh, whereas a physical situation, that's the first thing they tell you is I, I dealt with this directly. And it's trying to normalize that, I think, is an important part of the support process, don't you think? I think so, and, and it is interesting why, you know, why it's so hard, and, and maybe it's just, especially in a work environment, especially a high-performing company like Tier 1, you know, we have high expectations for ourselves. Right. And to, to, to fall short of that is somewhat, can be, feel embarrassing in this sort of fuzzy, vague area of mental health compared to, like, cancer, everybody right away just starts talking about it. What helped me write that note was a year earlier, we had started the initiative here called Start the Conversation About Mental Health. It really opened up 
some transparency around that. And it was actually because of that that I leaned in to writing that note and felt comfortable that I could do this. This is a huge part of any employee's life is their, their mental well-being. And you know, if we just step aside from the humanistic part of it, you say, if you really want your people to thrive and you want an organization that performs at a high level, how can you hide from this? It affects everybody, not just the individuals going through it, uh, but also the loved ones that support them. So, I mean, almost everybody in any organization is probably dealing with something around mental health at any given time. And the other thing that struck me is how much support you said you got from people around you. I'm always struck, people want to help, people want to serve others, and I think if you create a culture and an organization that provides the opportunity for people to be compassionate and support each other, that just strengthens the entire workforce, the feeling it is to, to be there, uh, and I think it has a lasting impact on who the business is. You know, there's one thing I would say that it is not just one conversation and right. someone's good. Right. Okay. It is not. Um, I had people that would just at random, even on the weekend, text me, hey Terrence, how are you doing? Okay, you wanna talk right now? I mean, just at random, and they would continue to follow up with that. So it's not one conversation. If you're gonna help, lean in and help, follow up. Make sure they're really okay. Um, take them out to lunch, have a conversation about it. Get them out of a work environment and just talk about it a little bit. Those are the kinds of things that help me get through it.